All right, folks, so I'm back to this addition floor here today. Um, I wasn't going to record this. I was just going to tear it down, but I thought that uh, some of you might be interested in this. So, you know, just kind of see what what a floor onto an addition looks like or what it should look like. Uh, so actually here, uh, they've used 2x8 uh, floor joists. So you can see, uh, you know, that's been properly done. That's a properly sized uh uh, piece of lumber for you know for this span which is uh, 10 feet the addition is 10 feet across and what they've done is they put in uh, a double header here double header joist to carry the wall uh, but then what they did where they went wrong here is they they uh, you know put that header on a on a wall up and pile that soil up against it and you know everything's rotted so you know the support structure for this has been compromised to do this properly they should have uh, a beam like a physical beam in here uh sitting on little concrete uh piers uh we use a, a little precast concrete thing i'll show you when we start doing the deck we do the decks the same way what this metal is, is they strap it underneath to hold up the insulation. I don't know if that's going to show or not. I'm not going to bend down there. Uh, when I do this, I like to use, uh, I, I sheet the bottom with 2 by, or with, sorry, with uh, 3 8 OSB. And what that does is just keeps the spiders and the bugs and the varmints out of it. So you can see every 2 feet, you know, they put one of those metal straps to hold it up. Now here again, they've put this um, plastic down before they put the plywood down. And they've used a, a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood on the floor, which is really good. They've screwed it down, so it's making it come up pretty easy. I just have to unscrew it basically and you know lift the panels out. Uh, but this, this plastic serves no purpose. Um, a better way to have built this floor, floor which would make it stronger, would be forget the plastic and uh, glue the subfloor down to the joists with a PL400 and then screw it with your screws. Uh, that would make a much stronger uh, floor. When you build a floor like that, it's 25% stronger than uh, if you just do it this way. So again, your vapor barrier on floors is in the plywood. It's the glue in the plywood is your vapor barrier. You don't have to put plastic. Any place you have plywood, it's you, you don't need uh, you don't need this plastic. And so then they've insulated in between here with some R20 insulation, fiberglass bats. Now something that's, that they've done here, which is which is good and good and bad, I'm just going to walk around up here. Is when you put an addition onto a mobile home, your heating system is always a, a, a bit of a bit of a dilemma what do you do with your heating system so around here what most people do you know the uh, mobile homes themselves have a central heating system and it's either gas or electric around here we have a lot of uh, gas so it's mostly gas um, and when people do the additions uh, what they usually do is they put uh, baseboard electric baseboard heaters in so then you end up with a combination of a central gas system in your main unit and then in your addition then you have these electric baseboard heaters so the, you know, the electric baseboard heaters do the job uh, they're kind of nice because they have a thermostat but you know then you have all the clutter on the wall of the of the of the uh, electric radiator uh, the, what I prefer to do is run the uh, central heating system tie into the into the main unit uh, heating system and then run branch uh, branch runs out into the addition and that's what they've done here so they've done three of these branch additions and you can see here's a uh, here's one here okay and here there's here is a barn barn has been made its home in there so you can see they came up from the bottom underneath the floor and they liked it here because it was nice and warm and they made a nest right here okay and so there's one there's another one here and there's another one there so a big benefit of that is that when you go to install air, air conditioning, then you have air conditioning. If you use your central heating system and put in a, you know, a, uh, a proper air conditioning system, the 
the your home is air conditioned like throughout the whole home uh, quite often in these mobile homes around here you know it gets hot here we're expecting temperatures in the 40s uh, celsius uh, next week so you know it gets good and warm in here and we want air conditioning and you know quite often you'll see two or three window air conditionings people put into the windows those are not very efficient they're not very effective you know your central air conditioning is much more uh, much more desirable so the problem with this is that you know you add on this addition was uh 10 by what is it one two three so three times eight is 24 it looks like it's 28 i think it was 30 feet so you add on another 300 square feet which is uh, basically a third of what the more than what the original uh, square footage was of the original unit the original unit here is 924 um, you know now you now you're using the same furnace to try and heat you know 30 percent more space and what that can do is you know it can uh, overwork your system so what I do, like when I do an addition, and I always, I always replace all of the HVAC equipment. I put in new HVAC equipment, and then we size it to include the the addition space, and then we get a we get a properly sized system. All right, so just kind of want to sh show you how this is working. Um, you know, none of this is treated wood. It, if if they wouldn't have, you know, if they wouldn't have pile the dirt against this they'd be okay but you know this is all rotten here uh, so the code in, in our area is that um, if you come within six inches of grade six inches of dirt it has to be treated uh, anything that's further than six inches away from dirt uh, does not have to be treated so that's that's our code all right so I'll, uh, I'll just carry on here and uh, I'll give you a little update here in a bit Stay tuned. Yeah, okay folks, so you can see here, I've pulled that plastic back and uh, you can see how this insulation is all pulled down around there. Okay, and then again here, you can see that hole, uh, something came up into here and into there. And same thing here, uh, you can see where here where the insulation has been hollowed out okay in here all these little pieces okay and over here it's all caved in so something big was uh, making a home in here my guess would be probably um, a raccoon you know or a feral cat uh, or possibly a, a good sized rat uh, here you can see on the insulation all those little black nuggets there uh, that's mice crap no scrap and so the mouse the mice have been under the floor all through here you can see where the insulation is packed down okay and they've been sleeping in here okay and they built uh, again they've hollowed into the insulation there those are all signs of mice all right so it's important to Keep your skirting tight and uh, keeps those little buggers out and uh, you know having some kind of a physical barrier underneath there that holds the insulation up and that they have to chew through you know really helps a lot to alleviate those problems okay so I got all that ugly gross insulation out of there and I'm just about to start dismantling these joists but uh, I thought you would like to see how they did the uh, HVAC work in here. So you can see these, these metal pipes down underneath and those are in the crawl space. So what they've done here is right there where that uh, big pipe comes out, that, that is goes into the uh, uh, crawl space of the mobile home on the other side of that plywood there. And that ties into the main heating duct of the mobile home and so this is what we would call a a main a main uh, a main outlet this one here okay and then from there it branches out okay and it goes over to 
uh, heat register over there. Okay, and then you can see how we have uh, the heat register here. Okay, so those are called branches from the main. All right, and this one goes along over to this one here. And so uh, this is actually quite nicely done. Uh, it's all insulated. It's wrapped with this foil uh, insulation, foil backed insulation. So it's, you know, it's, it's that, that, this is nicely done, quite nicely done. And here you can see the uh, those metal straps now from the top. Try to get out of the sun a little bit here. So you can see how they run the metal straps underneath the joists every two feet across. And they use that to hold up the insulation. But again, it would be better to have some kind of a paneling underneath there to uh, you know keep the varmints out. So now to take this apart, I'll just be knocking knocking all that tin off, and then I'll take peel out the uh, all the wood. Um, here they have lag bolted the, uh, this header joist to the main unit and again we've talked about this many times about how that is uh, not allowed where we are anyways. Uh, what this is effectively doing is putting the load on the mobile home and uh, you're not allowed to do that where we are. So to do this properly and to make it the code, see if I can get down here without killing myself. You would have to have, underneath here, you would have to have another beam stretching all the way along down to uh, concrete uh, blocks that will support this. And you know, then with the uh, beam and the concrete blocks on the outside there, this structure is completely self-supporting. It's not really attached to the mobile home itself. Uh, you would still lag it and everything, but that was just to help to keep it from separating. But the actual load bearing would be on those beams that are would, would be placed, you know, one along here and one along here. Okay, I'm going to carry on and get this pulled apart and uh, start getting this cleaned up. Okay, I'm a little further along here, taking this floor apart, and all I'm doing is just using my sawzall because uh, this material is all fur, and uh, old fur gets really hard. And they use coated nails, so uh, and they've toenailed everything into the into that header there. Um, so instead of trying to you know pull this apart, and it's sort of captured here, you know, with the double on the outside, it's hard to get it apart. So what I've done is just I'm just sawing this, and then I'm just peeling them out like this and piling them up over there and these are two by eight fur uh, two by eight fur at least around here is really hard to get uh, nowadays uh, there's the there's the grade stamp on it uh, number one fur this is premium lumber here so uh, this is going to go for sale i don't know what these are worth um but uh, I, <coughs> eight foot two by four spruce that's not that great as 10 bucks right now so you can imagine what uh one of these is worth so that should give me a little bit of uh, pocket money um also going to show you how this uh heat distribution works here now it's out we're getting exposed so here you can see that main that main trunk line that goes into the house ties into the main plenum of the furnace comes out and in the various little branches here to the various registers so yeah that's pretty cool um, and we had these two pipes here I didn't show them to you in the last clip but uh, one of them was the dryer vent the one that's all dirty is the dryer vent and see all the fuzz in there that's not good and this one was a uh, cold air intake and these look like they're going into the ground here but actually this is that thing i don't know i showed you this before there was this little box thing and it had this screen over it and and so this is where the dryer vent came, exhausted out and was the intake now obviously that's all full of dirt and stuff from over the years none of that was effective and uh the reason that they put that 
that uh, re that intake area there on the left uh, into the furnace area was because of the hot water tank. This home originally had a, uh, an electric water tank and they, they wanted to use the circuit, the electrical circuit for the hot water tank for uh, that shop at the back and so they converted to a gas and when they did that they had to create a combustion air intake and that's what that is for. Uh, the furnace doesn't have a combustion air intake. It's the furnace is an enclosed system, so it doesn't have a separate uh, um, air air intake, combustion air intake. All right, folks. So I'm I'm almost done here. I'm really going to be glad to be done with this demolition. It's getting old here. This is hard, hard, hard work. All right, be back in a bit. All right, so I've got all those board joists cleared out of there and uh, pulled all this insulation out along here and now here you can see this is what that entire wall and floor was resting on on the outside here uh, a couple of two by six blocks you can see them there and you can see how rotten this is here okay we can see here where this tin this tin here has gone down here okay obviously you know that tin didn't do much to preserve the wood here again it's the tin okay okay you can see here's this is what's holding up that whole thing another one down there it's just sitting on these little blocks here and completely deteriorated and look at over here you know this is all rotten underneath there there's nothing holding this is the double header here header joist this end is really bad all right so now it's just a matter of cleaning this out along here get all this tin and crap out of here and uh, then this little area will be cleaned up all right folks so the old addition is completely gone now. And I just loaded the last of it in the bin. And I've got all this old skirting crap uh, cleaned off. The only part that's left now is where the deck is. Still, st The deck still has to come off. But uh, yeah, I've cleaned it up underneath here. You can see it's starting to come together. Underneath it's looking pretty good. Just give you a quick walk around. This was a lot of work to get rid of this old building back here and this uh, addition. The deck wasn't too bad, but this was brutal. Just the way it was put together with screws and nails and glue and yeah it was just it was tough all right and there's where the old shed was it's gone and so i'm on my second dumpster i've got it full um i've still got this left from the old building this little pile here and the deck the deck there's actually not a lot not a lot of material on the deck there it's uh, it'll break down quite flat and this is going to be easy to take off because that deck's just been screwed um so screwed together so it's uh it should be pretty good but it's saturday saturday afternoon it was a tough week it's been hot uh we're gonna be in temperature at a high of 44 degrees celsius by tuesday which is uh, about 111 so i'm not sure how much work i'll be doing here next week because that's a little bit hot so there you go you can see that dumpster is full again ready to go and one more dumpster and we'll have what's left here uh, out of here all right folks thanks for watching stay tuned bye bye